Alright, so in the first post, I went over the two different forms of channel that you can use. And that was the basic run-of-the-mill C channel with nothing, nothing fancy about it. And then there was the, uh, the punch channel that is specially designed for railing purposes. It has the holes punched in it, already spaced out, everything's ready, so you're good to go really quick and really easy to put together. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into that too much. If you want to know more about the channel, you can go back and look at the first post of this series. But in this series, in this Post, I'm going to go over the, uh, the pickets, the different choices for pickets. Now for basic railing, what you normally see is just a basic square straight picket. Square picket. And you either have solid material, as you can see there, that is solid, or there is the tubing version of this. Now, mostly what most people use, I think, is, is pretty much solid material. Usually when I see railings and I go and I check them out and I'll be replacing them, it's all solid stuff. And I think that's just because they're old. Uh, a lot of older railings use solid material, maybe because tubing wasn't widely available. I'm not, I don't know. But the solid is great and you should always use solid if it's, uh, there's strength is really needed or desired, especially like for security bars or burglar bars or anything like that. Uh, you're definitely going to want to use solid because it's definitely stronger. But if you're just doing this uh, as decorative purposes, uh, just for a, a nice railing, uh, go with the so go with the tubing. Uh, and I, I recommend the tubing because it's much easier to work with. You can cut through it ten times faster. Uh, you're going to use less of your uh, consumables by cutting this, like you're grinding this to your saw blades, whatever it is that you're using, uh, by using, because you're cutting through less material. And the biggest thing, though, the biggest factor that, I, that comes in play is the weight. Now, if, if you're doing this by yourself, weight is definitely going to be something you want to think about because this stuff gets heavy. It gets very, very heavy, very, very fast. Imagine if you had 100 feet of railing and you had pickets every four inches, this is going to get really, really heavy really, really quick. So that's why I always use tubing whenever possible. Uh, it, this weighs less than half of this, and so you can, and it's much easier to maneuver, move around by yourself, or even if you have a partner, uh, transporting. Everything about this is easier by using tubing. And the other great thing is that it's cheaper. I mean, you can see that there's actually less material involved in this because it's not solid. Um, I think at the time of this recording, uh, a 20 foot piece of this half inch square tubing is uh, about eight bucks, I think, eight or nine dollars, in between eight or nine dollars, and a 20 foot stick of the solid is running around 11 or 12 dollars. So you can see it's quite a difference in price. So if, if you can multiply that by each picket, you know, that, that savings that will add up quite, quite fast. Uh, another option that sometimes people want something a little bit different, they want to stand out, but they don't want to spend a lot of money to do so, is you can go with uh, a half inch round material. And now the downside to the round material is that most of the time you cannot find this, not easily, in a tubing format. And that's simply because uh, the, the need is not really there. People don't want it as much. So usually you're going to find just solid material. Uh, which is fine, and usually if you can, and if you can find the tubing, it's usually more expensive simply because the need is not there, and, and you know they just don't make as much of it. All right, that's it for this post. Uh, stay tuned next week for post number three, and that is going to be the last post in this series of how to choose the right materials for the job. I'm going to go over things like cap rail and other little decorative pieces that you can quickly and easily put on your railing to make them really pop, and I'm going to show you how to do it very quickly, very easily, anybody can do it. Uh, go to theathomewelder.com, go into the comment section and let me know your experiences with these materials. And if you're just starting out, you're just learning from what I've shown you here today, let me know how it goes. I want to know how you're doing. Uh, let, me, let me guide you through the process if you have any kind of questions. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's homewelder at twitter.com uh, or however that goes. At, at homewelder is, is the Twitter handle. Uh, Facebook, you can email me, Andy, A-N-D-Y, at uh, theathomewelder.com. Any of those things, shoot me questions, comments, let me know. I love hearing from you, and I will see you next time.